Hello, good evening, how are we? It's um, ooh, 25 seconds past nine o'clock on Tuesday the 25th. Yes, my other screen is blocked by something else, which will, will become apparent very shortly. Um, yes, 25th of March 2014. You're watching Vapor Trails TV and this, my friends, is Vapor Scene. See you after the titles. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vapor. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Yes, good evening, good evening. Uh, all sorts of things happening in the background here. Uh, it is Tuesday, it's just got nine o'clock and you're watching Vapor Scene on Vapor Trolls TV. And I hope you are all very well out there. Clocks go forward this week, yeah, so it should be a bit lighter when I look out of my office window um, for the next few months at least anyway, uh, or until, uh, until October when they go back again and the summer that was the winter and the winter that was the summer doesn't happen, yeah. <laughs> now then, tonight I've got a little guest uh, and hopefully this is going to work because at about quarter to nine it all went to uh, hell in a handcart. Um, but uh, hopefully it will work. And here we are, next shot. Yes, indeed. Hello, Davey. Hello. It's all working now. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. Yes, tonight I've got, hey. I've got Davey coming in as a guest and he's going to be my chat waller yeah i was going to uh, introduce him as the effervescent loveliness uh, and then <laughs> you were all thinking it was going to be sav and you'd be disappointed because it was Davey. but you know it's not disappointing how are you dave you're okay i'm fine thanks how are you oh uh, i'm good i'm good now it's working because it wasn't working 16 minutes ago <laughs> yeah it was a bit worrying for a minute there wasn't it <laughs> it was indeed so dave and i've been looking at some news stories today uh, and uh, we're going to kick off with uh, one that uh, Mr. Dawn actually tweeted about earlier on today, uh, and it is this. This is from hospitalpharmacyeurope.com, uh, and uh, Dave's tweet there, one could be forgiven for thinking this was conceived by a big P think tank worried by e-cig sales overtaking NRT, and he was talking about this article in Hospital Pharmacy Europe online. RPS seeks consensus on e-cigarettes and pharmacy. Yeah, so the sale of e-cigarettes in pharmacies becomes more prevalent. We recognise that supplying and promoting e-cigarettes, none of which are licensed products, poses an ethical dilemma for pharmacists. Hmm, interesting point, isn't it? Look at the third paragraph. Although we recognise that once licensed, e-cigarettes may add to the number of nicotine replacement therapy products currently available, there have been limited, rigorous, peer-reviewed studies uh, to support their use as safe and effective products. E-cigarettes are currently unlicensed products with no standardisation of safety, quality or efficacy. I love that word. Efficacy. Yeah. And then on page two, I'm going to look at the last paragraph here. The RPS has updated its policy on e-cigarettes and has made direct contact with government health departments, regulators, patient groups, Royal Medical and Nursing Colleges and importantly pharmacists and pharmacy owners asking for their support for our policy. Hmm. It's a strange one isn't it because as we know Boots are selling the Puritane, uh, the Lloyds group have got the Vipes um, amongst other ones and of course independent pharmacies are also supplying cigar likes of various makes um, in addition to their NRT. Um, and I noticed in my local Lloyds, they've got the Vipes just on the counter. 
whereas boots, they're behind the counter uh, and you have to go and seek uh, permission from the, uh, the pharmacist when one is sold, as some of the medicines that used to be behind the counter that always used to ring the bell and show the packet to the pharmacist. Um, so, you know, I think some are a little bit hesitant about their use. Uh, and in fact, my nephew, his um, partner is a pharmacist um, for a very big company. Yeah, I'm not going to name who it is, but uh, I had a lengthy discussion with her about e-cigarettes. Um, and um, I think the fact that this company are now selling them, you can guess who it is, um, might have changed her view slightly. I don't know. I must speak to her about it. Yeah. What do you think about this, Davey? Well, I think it's uh, a case of them towing the line, isn't it? I mean, it mentions in the article about the MHRA and they're using the word efficacy again. We keep hearing that so much. Um, I mean, I know my local pharmacy. We live in quite a small estate and we have a shopping centre in the middle and the Lloyd's chemists, they're, they're selling the vibe. There are other brands available. But um, we know one of the women that works there, and she's been saying that they have people coming back regularly, buying it. They've started off and they've come in and they've said, oh, they've, they've tried the gum and the patches, but what's this? Because it is clearly visible on display. And they've tried it and they keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back. Now, she wasn't aware of the stuff that we use, um, but it's something that, we've discussed and it's something that we can continue discussing and you know maybe they can move on from cigar likes but i think the rps is basically towing the mhra line they've been told what to say that's my opinion I, you know i could be completely wrong but that's what i read into it yeah um it's a sticky wicket for the rps isn't it because obviously they are they're supporting the pharmacists um but yeah. at the same time the companies want to introduce these into their shops um, so are they at odds i mean you can argue that uh, some pharmacists don't like prescribing things like the contraceptive pill or the morning after pill for religious reasons um, would we see a pharmacist refuse to actually sell these that's the thing um, but i don't think that i don't think it will happen that way um, but uh, yes it's a can of worms um, that um, is only going to get deeper, I think, as we go on, until people start getting the right messages. Uh, and a little bit later on, we're going to look at the wrong kind of messages um, that are coming across from uh, the States. Uh, and by the way, guys watching, um, this entire show is being broadcast via 4G uh, and um, Davey's coming into, uh, the, into my system, 4G as well. So if it get, gets a bit patchy. That's possibly why, um, but it's better than my home broadband. <laughs> so there you go. Well, let's move on to the next story because uh, I mentioned pre-show and also at the top of the show about uh, yeah, some action um, by some vapors in New York. And this was tweeted earlier on today. And this is tweeted by Jim Kay at Spin Fuel News. Advocacy group files lawsuit against NYC. Yeah, and it uh, relates to this story and that's a very strange picture of a, what looks like a huge blue-ended e-cig. Um, but it boils down to, to this, basically. And that is a smokers advocacy group says it's filed a lawsuit against New York City seeking to overturn its ban on electronic cigarettes. The NYC Citizens Lobby Against Smoker Harassment said Tuesday it filed papers in state Supreme Court. The Smoke Free Air Act was signed into law during Mayor Michael Bloomberg's last month in office. Uh, the law prohibits e-cigarettes in all areas where regular cigarettes are banned. And the lawsuit says the ban regulates both tobacco smoke exposure and e-cigarettes. The group says that it violates the one subject rule of the city's charter. And it goes on there at the end. Battery operated, the e-cigarette device heats up liquid nicotine and delivers a chemical infused vapor. E-cigarettes are billed by many manufacturers as a cigarette you can smoke anywhere. Hmm, really? Smoke? Why can't they get this thing? It's vaping, it's not smoking. So uh, the FDA plans to regulate e-cigarettes but has not yet proposed rules, issued proposed rules. It's interesting that the last bit there, in October of last year, the City Council voted to raise the minimum legal age to buy cigarettes in New York City to 21, the first of its kind in the nation. 
and that measure applies to e-cigarettes, cigars, cigarellos and e-cigarettes. And it also prohibits the sale of small cigars in packages of less than 20. And the City Council and Law Department did not immediately respond to requests for comment. What do you think about that, my old son? Well, they've not responded. They've not commented. Um, but I think that this group, they have a good case here because of the, uh, was it the one subject rule of the City Charter? Mm -hmm. um, so you can't put e-cigarettes in with tobacco because they're two completely different things. Um, and I wish them every success. <laughs> do whatever I can to help him if I can you know it is absolutely great that people are taking action against that um, and then the other part about sorry I'm losing my earpiece um, the other part about the uh, age limit raising it for everything I'm not sure whether that will work at all really to be perfectly fair well I mean, the states have had the 21 limit on alcohol for many, many years. Uh, and of course, some states are still dry as well, where you can't buy alcohol. Um, yeah. So they're kind of ahead of the game in that sense. Um, whether or not it's right, proper and fair to increase the age limit for e-cigs to 21 or not it is debatable. Um, it'd be interesting to actually get one of these people on, actually. Uh, I'll have to try and find out who they are and see if I can get them on to uh, explain exactly what their point of view is. Um, yeah, that would be good. Raising the, the lawsuit. I'll see if I can find who that who those people are um, for another show. Um, but yes, I'm just looking in chat there, um, and you're not doing a very good job on the chat, mate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then, I'm not sad. I'm just, scrolling, <laughs> I'm just scrolling back up chat now. Um, and uh, Neil, yes, very sound suit. Uh, they have a good chance to win this and we need to watch and learn very closely yes we do neil yes we do um, absolutely yeah if uh, obviously the laws are different in the us uh, and they're handled differently um, but i think we need to learn from other parts of the world and they also need to learn from us about what we're doing um, to try and defend what we uh, what we think is a, a, a right and just thing to be able to do as adults not as children as adults because we're all over the age of 18 uh, we're voters we can join the army we can do all sorts of stuff um, you know it should be our choice whether we vape or whether we smoke or whether we drink ourselves into oblivion it, really it's personal choice and that's what exactly. we need to get across yeah so let's look at our next story then what we got yes the times of india now this was tweeted earlier on um, by swifty um, in fact it might have been, been yesterday um, Swifty McTavish, uh, and there's a story in the Times of India, which is this one. Um, E-cigarettes not helping smokers quit, which I found was a really strange one. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing because uh, people can see it on the screen as it is. Um, but I'll just read a little bit here. She and her colleagues followed 949 people who detailed their smoking habits through an online survey. They found that 88 of those who had used e-cigarettes were no more likely to have quit or reduced their smoking after a year than other smokers. Advertising suggesting that e-cigarettes are effective for smoking cessation should be prohibited until such claims are supported by scientific evidence, she added in a paper published in the journal JAMA in, uh, Internal Medicines. Uh, and the last paragraph there, the same results would have been obtained if the survey looked at smokers who try nicotine replacement treatments and the results have no bearing at all on whether e-cigarettes are or are not an effective method of smoking sensation, uh, sensation, cessation, <laughs> he contended. <laughs> well, you know, let me tell you this. The last cigarette I smoked was on February 18, 2012. Do these stop me from smoking normal conventional lit tobacco make your own mind up i've not lit one since february the 18th 2012 so yes they do uh, and many many people in chat you know they're going to say exactly the same they stopped smoking they started vaping they haven't looked back and they don't now smoke normal lit tobacco um some people are still going to dual fuel and that's their prerogative and that's their choice uh, and you know I am very pro-choice, just as Dave Dawn is very pro-choice. Um, 
and that that is what it's all about the choice what do you reckon Davey? yeah that's what it all comes down to um i'm the same as you it's been uh, i can't i don't know the exact date when i stopped and started vaping but it worked but whatever you want to do you should be allowed to do it who's to say you shouldn't do something if you want to smoke a cigarette, smoke a cigarette. If you want to vape, vape. Simple as that. Yeah. I just, you know, the, all this, these people who are so negative about, about vaping, they're not looking at the studies that have been done and all the science that's gone into it. They no. just do a quick thing and they jump on the bandwagon and suddenly all this stuff is coming out. And I don't like that. No. I tell you, I mean, I was abused. Um, <laughs> I was in New York and it was probably, let's see, um, 14, 15 years ago when I still smoked. Uh, and when I smoked, I really liked Marlboro Menthol with a vengeance, loved them. So I went to New York and I bought myself some when I was over there. And I was walking through Greenwich Village, smoking my fag, as you do. And I was abused by a market stall holder who was on the side of the road. Because um, I was walking on the sidewalk um, Smoking my cigarette. So like, don't you smoke that cigarette near me? Um, and that was That's ridiculous, 14, 15 years ago. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> God knows what it's like over there now. Uh, if you actually smoke, you're probably even more um, uh, thought of as a bad person. But um, there you go. But we don't smoke, we vape. Yes. So yes, let's, exactly. let's go to our final story before the break, shall we? Um, and this is in relation to something that Kev from Vapor's Place tweeted early this morning, uh, and it was this. Um, according to at Dr. Nancy NBC News, a teaspoon of liquid nicotine on your skin can cause death. That's a terrible lie. Shame on you. Uh, and it has then obviously gone on to lots of other tweets, and here's another few. Clive Bates. No, the biggest e-cig risk to children is that their parents carry on smoking due to nonsense about e-cigs on the TV news. Um, Nick Morris, the biggest risk to all children is irresponsible parents who keep everything within in reach, a doctor, uh, and our very own Dave Dawn. Again, quantify the risk, as great as from, say household bleaches, detergents, stop scaremongering. And it's not just that. How many times have you turned on the TV or you looked at a newspaper and found that a small child has picked up their parents 9mm Glock or Colt 45 or whatever thinking it was a Nintendo gun or a, an Xbox gun or other um, game machine gun and shot their brother or sister or shot themselves um, because they thought it was a toy. Which thing is kind of more dangerous? Yeah. Anyway, this is what the very doctor said on today, on the Today Show on NBC News. Have a little look. Back now with today's health. This morning, alarming news about e-cigarettes and the liquid nicotine used to fill the popular devices. First available in the U.S. in 2007, e-cigarettes are now a 1.5 billion dollar industry. In 2010, approximately 10 percent of current cigarette smokers had tried them. That number doubled to about 21 percent in 2011, and they are growing in popularity among younger people. In 2012, close to two million middle and high school students had tried them. Dr. Nancy Snyderman is NBC's chief medical editor. Nancy, good morning hey, to you. FDA has no oversight no, over no this approval. industry. You like them in general? Are they safe? Well, I think the premise, which I really liked at the beginning, was that nicotine in small doses, which is already found in gum and patches, could perhaps help smokers stop smoking. I don't know that the jury is in yet that it's gotten people off cigarettes and just onto these nicotine devices. But if I show you something like this, which is a preloaded, looks like a typical cigarette, right. you know, the, the, the nicotine is already preloaded and you buy it as a done deal. The issue comes in something like this, which has a screw top that you can take off, and then there's a cylinder, and then you can fill this with all kinds of stuff, including flavored nicotine liquid, vanilla, caramel, you name it. And the question is then, does it taste too good? And does it invite kids to try it? If it's ingested by a young child, if it comes in contact with the skin, can cause problems? It can cause death. 
So the California Poison Control Center has said not only can a teaspoon of liquid nicotine that can be found in a small container like this or up to a liter or a gallon, a teaspoon alone on the skin can cause seizures and death, a tablespoon for adults. So they're advising that if people use these refillable ones, you have to use gloves, and that brings up the whole the toxic hazard. We reached out to multiple e-cigarette companies right. for comment. Henley replied with a statement in support of industry-wide regulation aimed at public safety, saying its e-liquids are sold in sealed, child-proof packaging containing warning labels specifically directed at children and pets. And they're right. And the question is, but what do you do when you get home and these things kind of undone? And then how casual are parents around the house? And we have to remember, pets sometimes eat the same thing. And while some people in this country are inviting regulation because they want to keep the bad sort of guys on the fringe out, a reminder that there is product coming in from China. And so the nicotine amounts are not only all over the charts, but you have to worry about the fact that well, it's a neurotoxin, and we've said, you know, it doesn't cause cancer. It does directly affect the brain. And small concentrations may be fine, but if you don't know what you're getting, it could be deadly. All right, Nancy, we appreciate the information. Bet, Dr. Nancy Snyderman. I'm almost speechless because that woman is a doctor. Um, and she quite clearly does not know what she's talking about. Now, I mix using 75 milligram. I get it on my skin lots of times. I don't wear gloves. You know, it's your personal choice if you want to wear gloves. If you want to wear latex, fine. If you've got an allergy to latex, use nitrile. Um, or use polyurethane if you want to wear gloves. You don't necessarily have to wear gloves. But for saying to fill a CE4, you need to wear gloves. That woman needs some serious tweets. And she's had quite a few tweets today. Uh, and I think she needs to get quite a few more tweets from the UK, don't you? Yeah. Let's just look at what chat is saying. I'm not saying what, <laughs> what High Five Studies is put into chat. Um, it's the same old story, basically. Oh, and God forbid, you've got stuff coming in from China. Oh, God, the world's going to end because they've got product coming in from China. Um, you know, I've bought nicotine from the States, I've bought nicotine from the UK, bought nicotine from China, um, and it's just as safe as you want it to be. If you drink a load of 75, it's going to make you feel a bit sick. Certainly give you the nick ups and um, get your heart racing a little bit, don't you think? Um, but a teaspoon can kill you? Please, these people need to start thinking about what they're saying before they say it and not afterwards. What do you think about it, Davey? Oh, I just, I'd, I'd like to know what she's a doctor of. Is it of being a dumbass? Because honestly, she doesn't know what she's talking about. And there was one of the main things that got me was when she was talking about leaving bottles of e-juice out with the lids off and kids or pets might get them. Now, I'd like to point something out here. And I've got these to hand just because I was really mad when I saw that. Air freshener. Um, keep out of reach of children. Mm -hmm. I bet we leave those around. My deodorant. Keep out of reach of children. I bet I leave that around. And this is the kicker. Baby lotion. Other baby lotions are available. Keep out of the reach of children. And yet you'll find on a pack of cigarettes, you won't have keep out of the reach of children. And it's... Uh, Honestly, there's so much I can say about what she was going on about that I just can't believe. Um, I said to you before, Marco, that I thought about actually coming on here tonight and drinking a teaspoon of e-liquid to show that it wouldn't do any harm, um, but that wouldn't be a very responsible thing to do. But honestly, what is she on about? Yes, indeed. Well, you know, Dave Dawn... Uh, on uh, it might have been VT Talk or the Hazel, one of those shows. He squirted a load of e juice into his mouth, uh, and he's still alive. He's still alive in there, Dave. I've seen him in chat. Dave Kitson got loads in his mouth when he was uh, taking apart that little lookalikey, sigalikey. Uh, Dave's still alive and kicking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and on that bombshell, <laughs> I'd better take <laughs> the ads. So um, we'll see you in two people.
Vape Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. And it is indeed part two. Hello. I'm um, just looking at chat there uh, during the break and uh, very boring has, has put in something which is quite poignant. Um, never mind all the household stuff. You can go to a DIY store and buy a concentrated weed killer and leave that lying around. How toxic does we reckon that is when drunk? Well, yes, there are varying degrees of weed killer um, which are dangerous to animals uh, and very, very certainly dangerous to small children. Um, there are many things under our sinks um, that are dangerous. Bleach, flash, other cleaning products obviously are indeed available from the different outlets where they are available. <laughs> um, yeah, which is why if you've got kids, you've got the childproof things on your cupboards so they don't go in and drink it. Uh, and which is why they add Bitex to things, which tastes nasty. Um, but there you go. If they didn't have to add Bitex, then why would they? Yeah, if they didn't make it, if they didn't make the floor cleaning products that luminous and inviting for children, why would they have to add Bitex so it doesn't taste nice when they put it in their mouth? Yeah. <laughs> yes, chat, don't go there. Uh, otherwise, we will need the mind bleach. Anyway, after last week's show, or during last week's show, um, Entropy. Uh, in chat requested that we look at the nicotine testing kit and I thought yes good idea um, even more so given the fact that we've been talking about nicotine strength and other stuff now this VT I did uh, last year and you've seen this um, and the kit that I used that I purchased from eSig Wizard is no longer available from eSig Wizard that I've checked um, but I'm sure it will be available in other outlets and you can buy the different things separately if you search for them. So um, here it is, it's the nicotine testing kit. This is part one of a two-parter. So if you want to see the next part next week, then um, shout up in chat while this is on. See you in a minute. So here we are with what you get in the nicotine testing kit from eSigWizard. 
It all comes in this lovely little plastic container, which you're going to also use to mix in. So I'll get rid of that lid for the moment. You get a bottle of 0.12N sulfuric acid. You get a bottle of uh, bromoethyl blue um, colouring agent. You get two syringes, and these are both 3ml syringes, both with um, a needle. Uh, and the instructions you can find on the website on www.eliquidtest.com forward slash instructions. Uh, and there's a few videos as well on, uh, on YouTube, but I thought we would do a few tests. And the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to test some 75 milligram nicotine. Um, and the only thing that you don't get in the kit well, there's two things you don't get in a kit. A, you don't get uh, the actual nicotine to test. Um, and B, you don't get any distilled water. And I looked around for distilled water and where to buy it from. Uh, and you can buy it from eBay and places. And it works out, it's about £7 for a litre. Um, you don't need huge amounts of it though. So, you know, 500 mils will do. But it was suggested that I used deionized water, and that there is 10 millilitres of deionized water. Um, and distilled water, by its very nature, is already deionized, but there is obviously less impurities in that. Um, but I'm looking at a real world scenario here, and what you've got in the house, and you've probably got some deionized water. Uh, and I've tested this already, so this is the second time I've done this test. So what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to put the needle on that one. I'm not going to put the needle on this one. And I'm going to measure out from my bottle of nicotine one milliliter. And it's very important you get your measurements right. Um, and get rid of air bubbles etc in the syringe because these measurements have to be spot on otherwise you're not going to get the right result um, and I've just measured it out and got it all over my fingers so I'm just going to wipe my fingers and also wipe the syringe so I've got one mil of 75 milligram VG based nicotine liquid I've got here 10 milliliters of deionized water and they reckon use between 10 and 15 percent so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add there's different ways of doing it you can add the nicotine into here then add your deionized or distilled water into there and, and mix it up but i'm going to put the nicotine straight into the water just because it's easier that way and then i'm just going to swirl that around and mix it between the two until all the nicotine is mixed into the water uh, and i found this to be a better option because the 75 milligram nicotine is really really thick and it takes you forever to mix it thoroughly in with the water and now you can see there's none left in this cup and it's all mixed nicely in here and it's a lovely little yellow color at the moment so I'll put that to one side we're then going to add it says between six and eight drops so because we're only doing a one milliliter test I'm going to add six drops so one two three four five six so that's six drops of the color reagent the bromothermal blue and now we need to swirl that around to mix that in and you can see now we have a blue solution not unlike you get if you use one of those blue blocks in the toilet so that's that section done what we're going to do now 
is we're going to take our bottle of sulfuric acid. Now at this point I should just warn you that this is acid. It's very very weak acid and it's not going to burn through things like alien blood. However, if you've got a cut and you get it in a cut, it's going to sting. Um, and if, if you've got, um, if you get it under your fingernails, it could possibly sting. So you could wear gloves. I'm not wearing gloves, um, but I'm just going to advise you that there is a possibility of minor irritation, especially if you suffer from psoriasis on your hands or something like that. So I'm going to put my little syringe in and I'm going to take out over three mils and that is so we can knock all the air out of the syringe and get it to the top and then squirt the rest of this out until we get to three millilitres. So now we have exactly three mils of 0.12N sulfuric acid and we're going to add this into our solution. Now I happen to know that it's going to take more than three millilitres to turn this the colour we need so I've just taken it down to half a mil and I'm going to swirl it around and you can see it's still blue. So I'm going to add the rest of the three millilitres and you can see in places it is turning yellow and it has turned a lighter shade of blue. I'm now going to take another three millilitres from the bottle of acid. And I'm just tapping the needle to get rid of any air bubbles. And I can see one or two popping up. I feel like a junkie. <laughs> and then I'm just going to squeeze that down. one more air bubble to get rid of and then I think we're there. Okay so I'm just going to put the lid on the acid. I'm going to move that out of the way. So we've now got another three millilitres of the acid solution and now we're going to start adding this at 0.1 of a millimetre at uh, a millilitre at a time. So that's 0.1 That's 0 0.2, 0 0.3, actually that's 0 0.4, <laughs> I've gone a bit faster than I thought. It's 0 0.5 and you can see we're beginning to turn into a different colour. 0 0.6 and we've still got some green in there so I'm going to go another. So that's 0 0.7. And I think that is pretty much the right colour. That is a lovely yellow colour. It's not green. In fact, I think I'm just going to go one more. I'm going to end at point 0.8. Yeah, that's much better. So that is a really nice yellow colour. Not unlike a urine sample, strangely enough. So we've used, I've gone down to 2.2 millilitres on my syringe. So that means I've used 3 millilitres and then I've used another 0.8. So 3.8 millilitres in total. And before I do anything else, I'm just going to put the rest of this acid back in the bottle and then it's out of the way. So there we have it. We have the colour change to the right colour. And now we've got two options. We can either go to a pre-made chart. I'm just going to go to that on the web. We can go to the pre-made chart and that will tell us if we're testing one milliliter if we use 3.8 millilitres of acid, we get a nicotine content of 74 milligrams, which is not bad because 
test in a one milliliter sample has got a plus or minus two to four milligram margin of error. So that means that this could be 72 or this could be 76. So it's about in the ballpark because it should be 75. The other way of doing it is you use a calculator um, and for one milliliter of liquid you take the number of milliliters of acid used and you multiply it by 19.47. So if I do that now on my calculator we used 3.8 milliliters of acid and we're going to multiply that by 19.47 and that gives us a reading of 73.986 so as near as damn it 74 plus or minus between 2 and 4 that gives us either 72 or 76 so 75 is in the right ballpark so there you go that was the testing kit testing 75 milligram VG nicotine base. What we'll do next time is we will test another nicotine test, but one that I've mixed down from 75 to 24. And we'll see if my calculations are correct on that one. So there you go, that was the nicotine testing kit, um, testing the 75 milligram VG nicotine juice um, that I purchased. Uh, that particular one was in fact from the Far East, yeah, um, and it was kind of in the ballpark. So uh, reading in chat there, um, the various things, yes, be careful with the acid, you could wear gloves. Um, it will give you a bit, of a, a bit of a sting if you get into a cut, but just on your skin, as long as you wash it off fairly swiftly, just as anything else. Uh, it should be okay. Now, Davey and I have waffled so much. We have. Um, I've got a last bit of VT, which is the second part of the uh, crystals from last week. Um, so while that's playing out, I'm going to play it in a second. While that's playing out, uh, let me know in chat if you would like to see the second part of that nicotine testing video next week. Um, because I, ha I have it ready for you. Uh, that is testing some that I've mixed down from 74, 75 to 24 and also a pre-made juice to test if that is correct as well. So um, while I'm looking at chat, um, you can watch Cat and Sav, or in this case it's Sav and Cat, um, talking about menthol crystals. Here we go. Hey, it's Mark Hey, it's my turn now. Um, I'm doing mental crystals and very similar to what Kat showed last week I also have an ethyl maltol solution because I like to sweeten my mix I make a mental solution to add to various things Can I put that in for you? If you feel it's free I can do something, make myself look useful Feel free So put mental crystals Basically the same principle. Now these are lush. The good ones then, aren't they? Bold ones. Yeah, bold ones. And basically with menthol crystals, it's add to taste. I like strong menthol, so I've got quite a lot of big... Is that for a 30ml mix? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be for a 30ml mix. I've got quite a lot of big crystals, and again, we just sort of add them. They take quite a while to dissolve to the menthol crystals, so if I'm in a rush, I'll normally use the menthol. Do you use the Ban Marie method? Yes. Simply because my microwave goes in much. And you add menthol flavouring as well, don't you? I do. And I also add, um, sometimes, depending on what I'm mixing it for, the cool... Can I add that? You can add the menthol flavouring, yeah. Cool, cool order? <laughs> No, it's not the Colada as such, it's the one from Cloud9. Uh, I add that. Yes. Because I like that cool sensation. I mean, 
this is give it a bit of a mix. Get your bain marie in. Got my bain marie. And in it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make sure it doesn't tip over. You need a bigger, bigger pot or a smaller pan, maybe. Yes, because I've I've lost my pot, mm. and I, I've lost my funnel. You've lost your funnel. And I've lost my funnel. That's bad enough. Huh? Mm. And you just sort of mix it a little bit and let it do its thing. And if you've got a cold, to put a seat towel over your heat and sit over. Yes, that's a good way of telling <laughs> actually if it's going to be strong enough for you is by. Mmm, smell it. Can I? Okay. Oh, the smell of mint on that. Good smell of mint. I think that's a new word, the smell of mint. See, our beloved Dave Dawn would be rubbing that on Dave's chest when his feet are in one sock. Feet are in one sock. I he rubs his chest with Vic. And he rubs his chest with Vic. He hasn't turned up yet. No, Vic's not well. Oh, it's... It's mm. isn't it? Oh, it's clear, isn't it? It's it's it clear as your passages. It's, it's so it's everything. It's wonderful. So if you say... Jewel pouch. If you can of vape it, rub it on your chest. <laughs> That's the beauty. It's got no nicotine in it. It's all still flavouring. And I've got... That's that's dissolving quite quickly. It's dissolving quite nicely. Uh, the bigger crystals will take a lot longer than the smaller ones. So if you want to do it quick, just put a lot of small little ones in rather than big ones. Big ones, I like the big ones. They tend to have a bit extra oomph about them. So do yeah. you put anything else in there? Not for the menthol solution. If I was making a menthol juice, um, it's generally. As I like my menthol incredibly strong, but with a hint of sweetness, so it's generally just a balancing act between the menthol right. and the Right, so do you menthol. keep a bottle, like, like I would have a bottle of PG mixed with ethyl maltol, you yeah. would have a bottle of menthol yeah. to add. Yeah. And if you wanted something like tunes, you'd ask, add cherry. A bit of cherry or... Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that menthol can get a couple of drops, get added to most flavours that are mixed, just for the, not the flavour of menthol, the... Back of the throat sensation mental. Yeah. So I've always got a big bottle somewhere. Um, I've generally got a separate bottle of ethyl malt all mixed up to add to when I'm mixing the menthol and then I've got a bottle of menthol mixed up. Good thinking Batman. Yeah. See those crystals are melting quite nicely there. They're getting there. A couple of the big ones still there. But So there you go. There you go, that's that's simple as that. That's how to do, do it. Yeah. Should we put the chemist lab away now? Put can I have another smell of it? You can smell of it to your heart's content. Ooh, Get fresh. Be sure your menthol crystals are fairly fresh. Yeah. Or, or kept airtight. And also on a personal tip, get a little bit of cinnamon red hot. Just to have around to make a lovely batch of fire and ice. Fire and ice. But don't. Don't. Put it in anything that's. No. Uh, Be careful with plastic. Um, put it in something metal or glass. Then it's safe. So, on that note, are we. Should we give Marco a shout and put his tea down? Hmm. So, we all week. Give a shout. Marco! Ah, he's come. Back to Marco. Back to Marco. Ta And that was Cat and Sav, or Sav and Cat, um, in the second part there, talking about the menthol crystals. Uh, and uh, yes, it proved to be quite enjoyed in chat, maybe. Um, <laughs> some people like menthol, some people really, really hate it. I actually like menthol. And what I really like, really, really like, is Mark Jones's Five and Ice, because that is just off the scale nice. Uh, and if I do make it to the knees meet, uh, I shall... Uh, I shall get some, maybe. Yes, Mr. Jones, maybe. Mm. Anyway, um, you know, the 45 minutes has come and gone uh, a, little bit, uh, a little bit over that now. Um, so uh, that's going to be it for tonight. But next week, um, Davey, here he is. Hello, Davey. Uh, Davey's going to join me again. Um, and we're going to be doing a live Juicy Juicy. Um, and it's something that he doesn't even know what it is. He's been sent it and he's going to 
do a Juicy Juicy live on air. Uh, and uh, will we see him be sick? That's the question. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. Possibly. Um, so uh, don't forget, DE Talk has already started. So you can nip across and watch DE Talk uh, in about a minute's time uh, if you want to go across there. Otherwise, you've got RY4 Radio. It's on 10 o'clock and it's on every night over ry4radio.com. Tomorrow night, Team Talk with the usual crew. And then Thursday, it's VT Talk with Dave Dawn and Sav. Plus guests? Don't know. Have to tune in and find out. Sunday, of course, it is Dave's Tucker Box, which brings us back to Monday with Dave Dawn and Kat and Keith for the Haze Hour. And I will be here next Tuesday with this fella. This fella here. Yeah. Mr. Malik um, for Vapor Scene. So uh, until then, until then, have a good week. Oh, I'm, up, I'm in Scotland all week and then I'm in Bristol at the weekend. So uh, it's going to be uh, interesting. And if I can do some VT when I'm in those places, I might just do that. But until then, this chappy and me will see you next week. Tatty bye. See you next week. Bye. is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.